Hello, Vukto. Um, I don't like when um, booktubers or YouTubers in general stop in the middle of a video to drink. Uh, but uh, I have to drink. Okay. Um, I wanted to make the first video and not uh, bail on the very first uh, chance I have on the read along of uh, the name of the rose, especially because I <laughs> went out of my way to convince uh, Randy Ray to to talk, to talk about this book. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me. Um, it's in the camp. Uh, yesterday night, well, I'm not going to the camp now because if I went, they would ask me to go now because uh, I only paid for one day. But um, yesterday night, I, I went out uh, for like four hours into the desert. Um, that way is the frontier with Argelia, which I'm not allowed to cross. <laughs> but I really wanted to, re to know what it is to be genuinely lost, right? So yesterday, uh, with the last lights of sun, I decided to walk with the sun on my right, which is weird to think that being on the south of Morocco, uh, and the sun being on the west when it's uh, uh, setting, uh, I have to go north in order to get to the frontier with Argelia. I don't really know how that works in the map, I have to look at it. But I know that the sun was setting on that side, and now it's rising on that side. And I went that way, and supposedly that way is the frontier with Argelia, or that's what the Bereverse told me. So, um, that was like, the one thing I wanted to do in the one day of um, pause that I had, uh, the one moment that I have for making a video and talking, um, is now. In the buses, I can I can read, which is what I've been doing. I'm almost done with day one of uh, the name of the rose, but I cannot uh, I cannot um, uh, make a video there because it's not like a not like any bus, like it's full of people and uh, it's kind of weird to me taking a camera there and start talking in a language that is foreign to them I'm doing my best to learn Arabic but it's gonna take a while I've been, think I, I've been thinking I probably will gonna move to, to Morocco in winter and actually spend uh, like live here for a little bit and learn the language uh, but that's another story for another time uh, the name of the rose I just wanted to say a couple of my first impressions um, I was a bit scared when I started reading it because it is almost felt like a scholarly approach to writing a novel, which is in par partially what it is, but I thought it was going to sacrifice the, the narrative aspects and the things that make books uh, that are not philosophy interesting to read. I would enjoy it anyways, but it would be definitely not so enjoyable for other people that might be reading along someday. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the first, uh, basically, um, th there's like a prelude or introduction, I don't remember exactly now, but there's a moment, like a, a few lines before uh, the actual book begins that talks about the name of the rose as a story, a novel, an account from a monk uh, in the medieval era that, um, uh, that actually happened, rather than a novel that is being written now uh, by a medievalist, by um, Umberto Eco. So it's very interesting because, like, obviously he knows how to write um, academically. So you are reading it, and it, it starts feeling, especially if you don't know what the book is when you start it, you will be convinced that it's an actual book that was actually like written by a monk and that some a scholar has recovered it, which obviously makes it, in a way, so much more enjoyable because you're like, oh wow, this actually happened. It didn't happen, but uh, Umberto Eco is uh, probably the most important. Uh, a scholar on on the medieval era in in our time and uh, he is also super interested in semiotics and that also comes through uh, he has other themes that he has specifically studied uh, like beauty i read a book uh, very beautiful on him uh, from him about beauty and there are uh, some commentaries about it uh, about the medieval concepts of beauty um on on the beginning of the name of the rose um I always thought that the medieval idea of beauty is uh, 
for being the, the canonic one or the most conventional, I find it less interesting. But I think it's uh, important to know it uh, before knowing any subversion of it. Uh, yeah, uh, so the story is basically two monks. Monks, I cannot remember the name of the main, the protagonist, the one who's writing the book uh, now, but he, as a, uh, when he was still a, a young uh, priest, um, went with uh, Guillermo, an older monk that seems to be very well read and very um, is intelligent and uh, uh, just a very complex and interesting mind and uh, very, very. Um, like very observant, very alive, very um, creative on his thought. And obviously he causes a big impression on, on the younger monk. That's the one who is, when he's older, writing this story. And they are going to a monastery to, to study um, a series of um, deaths that have been going on. But even before they get to the monastery, we get a, in, I think that this is like a good, uh, um, a good way to prepare the reader for, for the kind of uh, um, characters that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, there is like a, a runaway horse and uh, uh, Guillermo sees the prints on the ground and that's enough for him to, uh, once the people in charge of that horse comes to ask him for, for it, uh, it, having seen the prints of the, of the horse's, um, how do you call it, I don't know, feet, um, on the ground, that's enough for him to be able to tell them what it is, what it is doing, whose horse it is, and what is its name. Um, uh, so that's very interesting, and um, that's as far as I'm gonna go with summary right now because I'm like my brain needs a bit of uh, uh, <laughs> blood, and um, I haven't slept very much. So I'm I'll, I'll give a proper summary of the book uh, later, but I just wanted to basically leave that out there like it is it feels like more than anything even more than medieval it's a story about a, a crime that has to be solved and i love when those things happen in the unusual contexts and this is one of those cases on top of that you have plenty of philosophy you have plenty of historical references more than i can uh, identify myself but i i kind of realize every time he's making one uh, because I know just enough to know that there is a reference or that he's uh, referring to some other text uh, or using it as an inspiration for a, for a paragraph on the book or something like that uh, without necessarily being able to pinpoint uh, that other text in every single case. Um, but that is very fun because it, um, it not, not in vain, uh, Umberto Eco is an expert in semiotics as well and uh, that makes the book uh, feel like a puzzle to solve not only in the narrative uh, linear story-like way but also in a more sort of like bits and pieces and clues that might not even be about the main story uh, being out there um if you haven't watched the movie i recommend watching it that was my my first uh, the first time i wanted to read the book was after watching the movie uh, if you care about spoilers do it afterwards if you want to read the book first but uh, yeah, I am very happy to be doing this read along. I hope uh, Randy Ray is uh, enjoying it as well. I I will watch his uh, video now. But uh, yeah, I have to go. I just heard people calling me.